All right, here we go. This is uh, the next question, and uh, this one is 2005. Free response uh, question number two, and we have a pendulum, and this pendulum is connected to the wall by a string, so it can't go anywhere yet. We're going to cut that string later, but it is a 2.3 meter long uh, massless string, so we don't worry about the string at all. Uh, it's very light, so it's light compared to the ball, so the ball's really heavy like lead. 1.8 kilograms is the ball, and then 30 degrees is our angle. First thing they want us to do on this problem is to go ahead and draw a free body diagram. So we always want to make sure everything starts from the center dot. We're going to draw, uh, go ahead and draw another dot there, and we know that going to the right is the tension in the horizontal string. We know going at a 30 degree angle from uh, this area right here is our tension of the pendulum string itself. And then finally going straight down is the mass of that pendulum bob times gravity. So you get three points for that as long as you only include those three things. For the next part, we have uh, calculate the tension in the horizontal string. So in order to calculate the tension in that horizontal string, what we're going to do is go back to our diagram again. So we've got MG going straight down. We do have TH going to the right. And then going up and to the left, remember we have the tension in the pendulum string. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my two components for the tension in that pendulum string. We've got a 30 degree angle here and we're defining our axes as this is going to be positive y and going to the right is going to be positive x. So this is not in an x or a y, so we're going to put two components to make it in an x and a y. So this side will be tp times the cosine, since it's the adjacent side, of 30 degrees. And this is going to be tp times the sine oops, of 30 degrees. My pen just freaked out. Let's uh, go ahead and think about uh, everything going left and right. So we're going to do all the sum of the forces in the x direction, then we'll do the sum of the forces in the y direction. And because this thing's not accelerating, it's not moving at all uh, at a constant speed, we're just going to say that the sum of the forces is equal to zero in both of these directions. The one that's going to the right is TH. Uh, the one that's going left is TP, so the pendulum tension times the sine of 30 degrees. So that, remember, is this line right here. And that's equal to zero, so we can, in the end, say the tension in the horizontal string is equal to Tp times the sine of 30 degrees. For some of the forces in the y direction, notice we have, um, we uh, are going to say Tp uh, times the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to, oops, sorry, uh, minus, so I want to get rid of that, uh, minus mg is equal to zero. So now we can say Tp cosine of 30 degrees is equal to mg. Remember, we're trying to find the tension in the horizontal string. So I think at this point, what we want to do is go ahead and solve both sides for, uh, we're to solve this side for Tp. So Tp here is going to be equal to mg all over the cosine of 30 degrees. Now we can take what we have here and plug it in here. So we can have an equation for TH, the tension in the horizontal string. That's equal to mg times the sine of 30 degrees over the cosine of 30 degrees. And we know sine over cosine is tangent. So this thing is tangent. So we're going to get rid of it and just say the tension in the horizontal string is equal to mg times the tangent of 30 degrees. Our mass here is 1.8. Uh, let's go ahead and use 9.8 meters per second squared and we'll do tangent of 30 degrees and your answer for the tension of the horizontal string then would be 10 newtons. So that one's not too bad, a little bit more math involved in it. You just have to do the sum of the forces in each direction. We know it's not moving so it can't be accelerating so the sum of the forces has got to equal zero. We found Tp, we plug Tp in over here because this is what we want. Uh, it wouldn't make much sense to solve for Tp here. Well, I guess we could, we're gonna get the same answer, but a little easier to do it the other way. Let's look at letter C. Letter C is the last part. This is where we start really getting into the energy 
Um, so the energy for this one, we're going to have to think about the conservation of energy and what's happening. So what we've done is we have this bob and the bob is now swinging this way and it's going to swing over and so when we cut the string we're just going to leave that string off um, we've got this pendulum swinging down so what is it doing well it's probably accelerating as it goes down but we don't have to worry about centripetal motion here instead we're going to say that this is point one and then when the bob is down here this is point two and we know that all the energy here is uh, potential energy. So we're going to say this is potential energy of the pendulum. Um, it, down at the bottom, we're not going to have any potential energy. So u here is equal to zero. There is no kinetic energy at this point, but there is kinetic energy at the bottom. So what we need to do is set up an equation for conservation of energy. We know mass times gravity times the original height of the pendulum. So how are we going to define height? What we're going to do is we're going to say it is this distance right here. Okay. So this is our height. Um, and uh, that's MGH original. We now need to uh, add to that 1 half MV squared. Uh, original speed is equal to mgh final plus one half mv final squared. Earlier we said that there is no kinetic energy at the beginning, so we can cross that off. That's just zero. And we know there's no potential energy at the end, so that's zero. So now we have an equation mg original height is equal to one half mv final squared. Um, so let's go ahead and solve this for VF. Let's go ahead and solve it for VF. Notice that your masses should both cross off here. And so we're going to try to get this guy to go. Uh, masses cross off. Uh, our velocity final then becomes uh, the square root of 2 times g times the change in height. Now our problem is, is we've got to figure out what is this change in height. So if we know the length of the string, so we're going to call that L, and then we uh, have it back here, we could then, uh, if we think about it, we could draw a triangle. So we can actually draw a triangle for this one. We want to know what is um, the length or the side of the triangle over on this side. So to do that, we've got to think about where is our angle. Where is our angle? So let's go back up to our drawing that we had, and we see that our angle there is 30 degrees. Our angle is 30 degrees, and it's right up at the top. So we're going to go ahead and put in that 30 degrees. Uh, go back to our original pin here. This is 30 degrees, and now we've got to make a triangle with this. And so the question you have to ask is, where's that right triangle side? Is it over here, or is it this side? So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're actually going to um, go ahead and we're going to draw a line straight across here. So this is L. If this is L, then this has got to be L times the cosine of 30 degrees. And the difference between these two is going to be our height. So the distance, the difference between the two will be our height h. So Really, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the change in the height is equal to the original length of the pendulum minus L times the cosine of 30 degrees. That will then give me this little height here. Um, so at this point, we're going to plug everything in. We're going to, um, now that we've got this guy, we need to put him into our equation. So we're going to say VF is equal to the square root of 2 times G times L, the quantity L, minus L times the cosine of 30 degrees. You'll also notice in this one that now what we can do is factor out the L. So this would be 2G times the length of the pendulum times 1 minus the cosine of 30 degrees. So let's go ahead and plug everything in. If we plug everything in, um, so we can do it up here. We're going to say this is the square root of 2 
let's use 9.8 again, just because we did before. The length of the string is 2.3, and then we need to take 1 minus the cosine of 30 degrees. When we're done doing that, so this is all the final speed of the ball, uh, we can solve for the final speed of the ball just by plugging everything in, and you should get 2.5 meters per second. Um, that one is a little bit more difficult just because you've got to think about what is what is really going on in this thing here. Um, so we've got L, we've got L cosine of the angle. Uh, if you subtract those two, then you end up with, um, you really end up with that height. And that is the end of 2005 number two.